leaders of Pastor Edison and Pastor Luringning Lumasag. Yay! I'm your Kuya Toto. <laughs> you can call me Kuya Toto. And, grabe, getting opportunity kay... <laughs> Before ko malakat, my chance up ako makashare some word. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, let's uh, invite the presence of God. I know the Holy Spirit is here. But just like how the disciples had expectantly wait for that moment when the Holy Spirit come to the upper room, let us desire the same timing, the same moment, the same experience tonight through His Word. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we welcome your holy presence in this very hour, in this very moment. And we ask you, to prepare our hearts for what is about to be spoken through your word. O Holy Spirit, you are the one who will glorify Jesus in us. You are the one who will reveal the secrets of the word of God. You are the one who will give us instruction through your word tonight. You will, you will be the one who will convict us of our sin. You will be the one who will give us direction and only you and you alone will be glorified in our midst tonight. Lord, as we will hear your word, may you speak to us very personally. And let us always remember that the word is Jesus. He is the word that became flesh, who dwelt among us and made its living, his living among our hearts. So let Jesus be known through the words that will be spoken tonight, his sacrifice on the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Palapala si Lord. If there is one compelling message, kaya hindi pa nga yung ugit kay Lord in this very hour, na ang in-reveal nyo man sa ako ay is, wait, haba niyo yung Pastor Joel Montes. The vision, we don't have any other vision. Amen. But ano kanyang vision natin? Or sino kanyang vision natin? Si? Si Jesus. Kaya hindi Shout out with confidence tonight the name Jesus. One, two, three, go! Jesus! Yes, because wala na kita sang ibang pangahilip up sa mga very hour, but Jesus alone. Now, we had just concluded our ladder of success. So let's give a glory, give glory to the Lord for that. And in continuation, we, uh, so mga week, no? I was given the, the task to share to you about starting up new life. From discipleship to life of a new believer. Now, let me begin with Romans 5, 8 to 10. It says here, But God proves His love for us in this. Can we all read together the underlying um, phrase? One, three, go. While we will still sinners. Let me read. Christ died for us. Therefore, since, since we have now been justified by His blood, how much more shall we be saved from the wrath through Him? Let's proceed to our three. Next slide. For if when we were enemies of God, we were reconciled to Him through the death of His Son, how much more having been reconciled shall we be saved through His life? May the Lord bless this word. Let's go back to slide Number two, it says here, but God proves His love for us in this. While we were still sinners, say with me, sinners. Yeah. You know, hindi, hindi kinaantay ni Lord kung kailan ka magbago para mahalin ka niya. You know, this is, this is the sign of religion teaching us that you need to be perfect para ma-serve mo si Lord. You need to be the best para ma-serve mo si Lord. But the word of God says here, while we will steal sinners, say with me, habang ako ay makasalanan. Hallelujah. Sino nagkaka-revelation dito? Amen. That while you are still sinners, it is important kasi na matutunan natin how to start up a new life in Christ. Because it's possible that we are serving God for the longest time. But still, the guilt, the argument of sin is still, you know, holding us back. Kaya wala ka pa passion, passion mag-serve kay Lord. Because you have still doubts. Lord, you forgive mo rin bala ko. 
Lord, hindi ni Kuya worthy. And, and you are just stuck in that cycle of your life. But the Word of God will liberate us tonight of the truth that while we, us, we were still sinners, Christ already died for us. Wow. Sino gusto sina? Amen. Now therefore, since we have now been, say with me, have now been. Have now been. Now, um, when, when we came to know Christ, you know, we cannot separate reading the Word of God from, grow, uh, from growing in the Lord. No? Why? Because the Bible is where Jesus is being introduced clearly. You know, kung may very thin man ang Bible, in the very beginning and the end, it is Jesus is coming. Okay? Now, how can you say that you have a relationship with a person when you don't want to know or dig deeper of the whereabouts or kung si ugit ba na siya nga tao? Kagi na ka mo nagnubyo or nubyan na wala kang kabalo sa family background? Hindi mo balaan kung ikaw lang ba? Kasi iba ka mo? No? It is important that we when, we, when we desire to know Jesus, we have to read the Word. And part of us exercising reading the Word is reading it carefully with wisdom. Kaya ina pa ngayon, as the Holy Spirit revealed to us. Now, in that verse, there is such a word as have now been. Alam niyo, in grammar, when we say have now been, meaning... It is something that occurs right now and is still occurring. Okay? Do you understand? May, may past po tayo. But when you use have now been, meaning kahit ngayon nangyayari. Hallelujah! Hindi siya nagtapos kahapon, but have now been means even at this very hour, nag-start siya noon, but it's still happening right now. Now, have now been justified by His blood. Sino nakakaramdam na paunti-unti sinajustify ka ni Lord? Amen? Because that's the Word of God. Now, have now been indicates that something has recently changed or come into existence and is continually being changed. Wow! Kaya in the, sa grammar, pag ginagamit mo yung been or have been, Meaning, nandito pa, ginagawa mo pa din. Ginawa mo na, pero ginagawa mo pa. Okay? So, for example, pwede kasi sabihin na since we have been justified. Uh, I mean, since we, since we have justified, no? Or na-justify na tayo. In the past, we, we were justified. Pwede sabihin na since we were justified, meaning, tapos na talaga yun. Okay? Although, tapos naman na, pero ang gusto sabihin ni Lord, sa iyo ngayon is even up to this moment, God is still is in the process of justifying you by His blood. Sinong gusto nun? Amen? You know, we have prayers that at times God will not answer because hindi pa tayo prepared. Amen? Hindi pa ganun ka justified. <laughs> Can you just imagine if God will entrust you with a car and if you don't know how to drive it, or gaan ka ni Lord sa car pero wala mo ng practice ng self-control kaya pag-abot mo sa dalan grabe oh nagbusina lang, namuyayaw ka na dahil grabe, tapos tapos may pangalan pag hit Jesus is love sa likod <laughs> now that's the process of God in our lives I just want you to see something tonight that even up to this moment the blood of Jesus is continually justifying us in the next verse it says Next verse tayo. For if we were enemies of God, say with me, enemies of God, sina dito na feel mo at once naging enemy mo si Lord sa buhay mo. In assessment, you know, ang standing yun natin, kung hindi natin kilala si Lord, enemy na ginta. I don't, I, I cannot measure the grace of God in the lives of people, but as much as the word is concerned, you know, if you will not receive Christ in your heart, walang justification, walang, walang remission ng naging kasalanan mo, your standing is you are an enemy of God. For if we, when we were enemies of God, we were reconciled to Him through the death of sino daw? His Son. How much more having been reconciled, ari na naman si having been, grabe, 
Kaya asa subong ina-reconcile pag iti Lord ikaw sa iya. Amen? Na-feel nyo na, ka nang, hindi pa man din ko nagbago, Lord, pero ginabago mo ko, Lord, tama-tama. Amen? And later, we are gonna discover some truths about, about our new life in Christ. So we be saved through His life. Now, in Matthew 26, 27 to 20, 29, My blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Say with me, without the shedding of blood, the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Now, Jesus' blood, next, next time I'm na slide ko yan. Jesus' blood gives us new life. Say with me, new life. Hallelujah, palapanda si Lord. Balan mo kung wala ang tubo ni Jesus, wala kagit. Kagit lang may aral ka. <laughs> the picture of a person without Jesus is leprosy. No? You know, the lepers in the Bible, it, it's not just a simple story. It is a picture of a person who's continually sinning. Leprosy during that time is cursed. Now, if we are, we will not receive Christ in our hearts fully, truly, ten years ka nag-abot sa church, why na bago life mo, kay wala mo dyan when we can receive si Jesus. Because again, transformation will happen when a person will genuinely accept Jesus in his heart. Do you believe that? Amen. No transformation that could last longer if hindi genuine ang naging, ang pag-receive sa isang katao kay Jesus. You know, it's undermining the power of God when you say, Lord, kipa, kumo ko dati, pero subong mabalik ko sa old life ko. Are you sure you are being changed when you have that kind of mindset? Nga nang sarili mo lang hindi ako, nang ginauna mo. You know, you cannot commit. Grabe, eh. Talok ka sa time mo kay Lord. Sino din talok sa time na kay Lord? Do imugit na. Ang malika, tapan mo, do imugit na. No, I'm not being angry here. But it's the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Next point, I next truth here. We must reach a point of accountability that it is our sin that crucified Jesus on the cross. Pag hindi nag-abot sa mindset mo na ang sin mo, ang sin ko, ang nag-crucify kay Jesus sa cross, you will never have a sense of accountability. Do you believe? Nga lang patangas ka lang kung hindi mo ibigin embrace niya. Lord, it is my sin you know, who pierced your side, who crucified you on the cross. We must understand this, you know, if hindi na doon maabot niya kind of accountability of our sin before God, we will keep on and keep on sinning. We will never desire a holy life. Do you believe? Amen? Ang problema, gusto mong magbago, pero di mo magawa. Why? Because you have never reached a point of accountability in your life. Never in your life you become responsible. Okay, assess pa lang life sa isa ka tao na wala inoo. Let's say, mag-commit siya sa work, pero one year lang na, two months lang na. But those who are genuinely changed by God can commit for a longer term. Amen? Can pursue a commitment, a so-called commitment. In the marriage, pag wala ang inoo, what happens? Mas in ano pa nakabuot? Buot is not enough. No? Good is not God. God is good, but good is not God. Amen? God is God. Amen? Hindi yan enough na maayaw lang kayo buot. Mani siya dumi. Mani siya sikrito po na. Lagali, grabe. Pulo, kali ang nubyo. Ipos-ipos lang. No, good is not enough. Meek, meekness is not enough. No? We need to really understand that the accountability we have is every time we are seeing. In fact, in a, in a, my, my verse sa Bible that says, every time you sin, it is as if you are the one crucifying Christ. Ginapukpuk mo liwa tong nails somewhere in Corinthians, I think. Ginapukpuk mo liwa tong nails sa kamot ni Jesus. No? Imagine if you are sinning, going back, back to that old mindset, old people, old habits, you are continually, and you are the one who's crucifying Christ himself. Ikaw isa sa mga naga, naga-singgit niya, crucify Him. 
naging naging promoter kahit noon sa pagcrucify ni Jesus. If you will continually embrace the wrong mindset in your life, you know, in the, uh, some of us here, no, I believe Catholics kita, but Ah, uh, sino mga naging uh, Katoliko din in the past life pa? <laughs> And uh, yes, so may mga Katoliko din. That's why we welcome different religions here because we are not here to to, to convert you. We are here to to usher you to the relationship with Jesus. Amen. Pala panta si Lord din. Di ka mo mahal do ka. Now who are gaining revelations tonight? Amen. No, in the short time that was given to me, It is really the heart of God for us to understand that only when we will embrace a sense of accountability, we can start a real new life in Christ. No, wala, wala pong binago si Lord na nagpakawala after or na, nagpakawala lang. Something must be done. Discipline must be, must be established. Amen. Connection must be cut off. Lifestyle must be changed when you come to know Christ. Hallelujah! Kalagyan ka hindi. Sino excited? Yung may bakuhon si Lord sa life niya. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, there are steps or there are truths that we need to embrace and exercise as we, you know, uh, as we journey to the new life in Christ. Number one, we need to understand salvation. Say with me, salvation. Now, dapat maintindihan mo what is salvation. And it's very simple. The sal salvation is the gospel is the good news and the message of salvation. And the gospel is Jesus Himself. Can we shout it one more time? Salvation! salvation. Number two, repentance. If may isa man ko siguro na gusto natin matandaan about repentance is this. Repentance implies a change in direction. And changing one's mind. When you change your mind and change your direction, that's repentance. It's not just enough that you feel sorry. Hindi na siya enough when you say you repent. When you repent, you turn away from sin. You change your mind. You change direction. Hallelujah. Number three, that we need to establish an exercise. Lordship. Lordship means bringing back order in our relationship with God. How can you say that there is no lordship pag may disorder sa pagkaginuusang ginuho na to? Birthday, Sunday service, birthday gift, lordship, zero. <laughs> beach outing, Sunday service, grabe, beach outing, oh, may distortion sa lordship ni Lord, disorder ang lordship. Lordship is just simply choosing God first in everything. Amen? Nga, una-unaon mo na, does that establish the Lordship of Christ in your life? Yes or no? Pag no, hindi na dahil pag entertain. Amen? You know, Lordship is bringing order to our relationship with God. It's acknowledging that He is the Lord over our lives. In your choices, nga ipursu mo na course, Just for you to take revenge to people, na ay porso mo lang mabisnis, pag revenge ang motivation mo, you are not establishing the Lordship of Christ. The Lordship of Christ in your life. Amen? At ang una, salvation, repentance, number three, Lordship, number four, forgiveness. Say with me, forgiveness. It may not be easy to forgive, especially when the people who hurt you are one closest to you, but God doesn't want His people to live in bitterness. That's why, for you to start up a new life in Christ, there must be an exercise of forgiveness. Amen? Pastor uh, Stephen Prada says, There is no such thing as forgive and forget. Kasi nare-remember mo talaga. Tama ba? The one who molested you when you were young, can you forget that? If it's by the grace of God and His, and His power and miracle, pwede. But in default, hindi mo kit siya dali-dali malimta. Tama ba? Hurts are hard to forget. But sabi niya, you can say, forgiveness is this. There's no such thing as forgive and forget. But you can change the way you remember it. So when you change the way, you remember it. Pwede 
pa remember mo ang hurts and pains, but when you say you change the way you remember it, ang imo na subong intrada, pag ma-remember mo, praise God. Sanggin hurt niya ko, nakilala ko si Lord. That's forgiveness. Amen? There's no such thing as forgive and forget, but you can change the way you remember it. Si Madri, every time ma-feel niya tong hurt before, ang mag-lead sa iya, ang makapapasalamat na siya kay Lord. Amen? Who will begin to, to change the way you remember things in your life? No, may mga ginakalibrate si Lord sa mga utok. Ano, ang mga galing ng forgiveness, Lord. And forgiveness is this. Ang balik basura one time. Forgiveness is this. Balain mo daw kung na-forgive mo na ang tao. If you are now ready to be hurt by the, serve, by the same person, by the same act. Again. And again. <laughs> you know, that's the gauge na na-forgive mo na ang tao. No, nga lang, ready ka na liwat masaktan niya. Ready na ba? <laughs> Pag hindi pa gani, meaning na pangusog ka pa, forgiveness is still on the process. Hallelujah. Next, ayun na ko. Lifestyle. The four greatest meetings. For us to start a new life in Christ, we need to, to remember our four greatest, greatest meetings. Anong number one? Devotion. Number two, cell. Number three, Sunday service. And number four, training. Lifestyle. Number four, devotional life. Any number five, number six na devotional life, of course. Devotion or quiet time. A kind of devotion not limited to a single hour or day in our lives. The word devotion is not limited to one hour. When you say you devote, devotion in doing what pleases God. Devotion in reading the word, meaning when you devote yourself, you are open for the whole day that God will tell you, not open ang Bible mo, I will talk to you about something. That's devotion. It's not limited to one hour. Nagadiit ka ba? Because you are devoted. If you're devoted to a skill, you will do everything to to enhance it. Tama ba? Sino din devoted sa iyang relationship kay Lord? Yes. Hindi magtamad. Pasagin. Last night, ganito na send ko sa mga books because I've been praying. Bala nyo nag-pray ko nga maging available for free tong kay Pastor Vlad ng mga books. Kaya ito, bala na ko kamal ka, weeks ka pang ita, books nga to ba? And the Lord answered it. Siya pa ito nag-share. Yan ang in-open nyo for everybody. You know, when when you will just desire, God can just, you know, hallelujah. <laughs> ang problema sa aton, feeling ta bright na gilabit ha. Hindi na kita magbasa. Now, your active life of prayer. Gusto ko, yung yugin mo yung katabi mo, sabihin mo siya, active daw! <laughs> life of prayer. Say active, tapat ano? You know, you you make it a point of communication. No? Hindi lang sa prayer na nagpumpo. Kala nang ka-communicate ka kay Lord, mas ka-pumpo ka sa mall. Ako ka prayer ko ya, Lord. Magliko ang pricing, tambal ko, Lord, protectionay kami, Lord. Kamu magsakay ka mo tricycle, duway lang ka mo labon sa ano ba? Grabe na ka cellphone ba? When you ride a tricycle, I'll, I'll tell you a secret, no? For you to be far from accident, of course, by the blood of Jesus, nasing kwaita na. Pero in wisdom, dapat kung kasakay ka tricycle, you help the driver, nga nang pag hindi niya kanina kita, dapat arang ka nagagayit, you are vigilant. That's exercising, that's, that's a fruit of exercising prayer in your life. Why? Because, aware ka pala nga nang, at any moment, pala, nang God can just speak to you. Dapat pas-pas ka kid. Amen? Ang prayer, kapag ko ka, Lord, you know, ma-remember mo ang family member mo, pray for them. No? When you re- when God will impress to you a person, speak something, no? Declare a word. Lord, bless mo siya, no? Nagdumad ko siya kagaina. Ang ex ko na dumdumad ko. Oh my goodness. Aragal siya sa ICU. Mga mo, wala na. Tapos, kaya pa-remember ni Lord sa imo. Kamalik na tapat mo, active life of prayer. Number three, witnessing. Importante po sa new life ang witnessing. Why? Because this is your moment to share your new life with other people. Okay? It was not end here. You know, pag ang chicken choice ang Jollibee namin, hindi mo kanya makontain, ishare mo kanya kung ano ka namin. Kung ang relationship mo kay Lord namin, hindi mo kanya makontain, ishare mo kanya. Kung wala dating ang relationship mo kay Lord, asa subong ikaw lang yakon. Why? Kasi may ma-invite kay Lord. Kaya wala man lang may mo relationship kay Lord. Simple lang. Next, life of obedience. You know, when you say life of obedience, our life revolves around obedience and disobedience. Do you believe that? 
ang life na nagalibog around obedience and disobedience. Wala nang in between. Any form of disobedience should be overcome by the great strength of our obedience to the Lord. The good thing about obedience is, when you exercise obedience, it gives you more power than it's time to obey. Do you believe that? Pag nag-obey ka subong, ang next mo ang obedience, it will not be that hard anymore because you already practice obedience here. Tama ba? Pero pag naging lifestyle mo lang disobedience, it takes God's help and grace and miracle and effort on your part to obey God the next step that we're going to take. Okay? Amen? So, they excited na i-exercise ang iyang obedience to the Lord. Amen? And lastly, life in the church, belongingness. This is very important. A church is a place designed to have spiritual encouragement, inspiration, and fulfillment. It is not a building but a place to belong. It is a spiritual family where the presence of God dwells. In the next slide, Kuya. Let me read this to you. This is our application. Let us commit ourselves in the church and treat it as our spiritual family. This is your spiritual family. In order for you to be effectively carrying out the new life in Christ, you need to have a community. Say with me, community. Amen. Sino na happy na nabilong siya sa saninga community? Amen. And we will not just end here. Kay namin man ang chicken joy tanga na receive i-share na ito sa iban. Amen. Now, think on how and what you can contribute to other people. Engage in our church activities and service so you can grow with them together. And the last verse that I'm going to share as I end is this. Love must be sincere. Wow. Be devoted to one another in love. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Uh, how should I end? No. So, I know that this is a very compact sharing. <laughs> no. So, I believe na may nakuwakin kita, amen, tonight. Those things, I know they are familiar to you, but if the Lord had spoken to you at, at any point, you know, embrace it. Ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you are trying to change in my heart tonight? And uh, I believe that the Word of God and His timing is enough already. Let us pray. No? So, mag-pray kita tonight. Let's pray, Lord, we thank you that just like in the old times, how you amplified your voice in that ocean, just enough for people to hear. This is in the same setting, Lord, we know, because the Holy Spirit is here. Lord, we are not dependent on the convenience of time and even in the convenience of the place itself because you can just speak a word and it will change us forevermore. So we declare that the word that have been spoken to us will powerfully change us from the inside out. Lord, give us the kind of a heart that will give out most important Holy Spirit to our spiritual walk. Maybe for the longest time we've not been growing in our personal life because there are bitterness, unforgiveness. We don't yet understand repentance. Oh God, we don't yet understand salvation. We cannot even establish discipline priorities in our lives. But tonight, thank you that you said in your word that while we will steal sinners, even up to this moment, you were impressing to us the very sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Hallelujah. And we have been reconciled by the blood of Jesus to the to, to, to God the Father. Salamat ka, Lord, that you will empower each one of us to overcome and to be a new creation in Christ Jesus. Lord, we're gonna see, Lord God, each one of us. Lord, mag-ano mag, kami, Lord, mag-move forward kami, mag-accelerate kami in our relationship with you. Because, Lord, the days are evil. Huligay kami, Lord, to also double time in sharing your gospel. By first, Lord God, making it, Lord God, a solid foundation in our hearts first before we will share it to other people. Jesus, establish your Lordship in our lives. Holy Spirit, come us. Speak to us. Reveal to us the secrets of the Word of God. We honor you and we thank you for the time being that you have allowed us to hear these words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.